Here, in this part 2, we will go through the key concepts. To begin with, audit sampling is defined as the application of audit procedures to less than 100% of items within a population of audit relevance, such that all sampling units have a chance of selection in order to provide the auditor with a reasonable basis on which to draw conclusions about the entire population. Now, what is this audit relevance? What does it mean? Think about it. Population refers to the entire set of data from which a sample is selected and about which the auditor wishes to draw conclusions. Sampling risk is the risk that the auditor's conclusion based on a sample may be different from the conclusion if the entire population were subjected to the same audit procedure. Sampling risk can lead to two types of erroneous conclusion. Now, some books also use the term confidence level. It is a complementary um, to the, towards the term sampling risk. If you were to look at the tables, yeah, you will find that uh, the use of confidence level 90% or confidence level of 95%. So 90% refers to a 10% sampling risk. Meanwhile, 95% of confidence level refers to also sampling risk of 5%. Now, there are two types here that we'll be looking into. Um, the What we call attribute sampling, yeah, which is the samples that we use to test the control. Another would be the monetary unit sampling. This refers to the sample that we test the, the, for the purpose of testing detail balance. Look at this table. Okay, now we have two columns here. Yeah. One is the auditor's conclusion based on the evidence derived from the sample selected. All right. Now, the second column is the actual state of the controls which is present within the entire population. We wouldn't know for certain, isn't it? It's not possible to know. But there are two types of state. Yeah, one is that yes, yeah, one is no. All right, let's have a look at this one. So we have concluded that the control risk for our client is actually low. Now recap, what do you mean by control risk? Now here, the actual state is yes, the control is effective. Then, yeah, we have arrived at the correct conclusion. But then again, if it is no, the control is not effective. Then we have inferred wrongly, isn't it? Which leads to audit ineffectiveness. Okay, there's a second uh, conclusion that we can make is that yes, the control risk is high. But if the control is actually effective, meaning to say that the control failures in the population are actually lower than what has been inferred because we had inferred that there's a high control risk, but the actual fact is that the control failures are actually low. All right. So this will lead to what we call audit inefficiency. But for the second state is that, yes, yeah, we have concluded correctly. Now, Recap, what do you mean by ineffectiveness? What do you mean by inefficiency? Which one would have greater implication? Now, this is a sampling risk on substantive tests of account balance. So similarly, look at these two columns. All right. The first column here is the auditor's conclusion on the client's book value. Remember, I mentioned about monetary unit sampling. So this is on book value based on evidence derived from the sample selected. 
The second column here is the actual condition of actual state of book value present within the entire population. Remember, it's not for possible for us to know for certain. So we can only categorize into two states. One is yes, yeah, this one, yes, it contains a material misstatement. Another is that it does not contain a material misstatement. Okay, for the first yeah, we found that or we concluded that the book value does not contain a material misstatement based on the samples that we have selected. All right, for the actual state, yeah, for, for the first actual state, yes, it does not contain a material misstatement within the entire population. Then we have arrived at the correct conclusion. But this is not the case if the entire population actually contains a material misstatement. Therefore, there's a risk of correct, incorrect acceptance, which leads to audit ineffectiveness. Yeah? All right? Now here, the second one is that we have concluded that the book value is likely to contain material misstatement. But here, in actual fact, it does not contain a material misstatement. Therefore, yeah, we have actually um, wrongly, uh, there's another term here called risk of incorrect rejection of book value. Okay, so this leads to audit inefficiency. But here, under the second state, we have actually correctly concluded. Okay, now, it's similar, isn't it? One is about ineffectiveness, one is about inefficiency. Now, the question also remains the same. Which one have greater implication? But then again, remember, for the test of control, yeah, that will lead to test of detail balance. Right? But for the test of detail balance, or sometimes known as substantive test of account balance, this would lead to issuance of the auditor's opinion. Okay then. Non-sampling risk. The risk that the auditor reaches an erroneous conclusion for any reason not related to sampling risk. Examples are inappropriate audit procedures, misinterpretation of audit evidence, and failure to recognize a misstatement or deviation. Anomaly is a misstatement or deviation that is demonstrably not representative of misstatements or deviations in a population. A misstatement reflects the misstatement of the book value, whilst a deviation is a departure from adequate performance of internal control. Sampling unit the individual items constituting a population. Statistical versus non-statistical. Now, basically, statistical is a random selection of the sample items. And the use of probability theory to evaluate sample results, including measurement of sampling risk. A sampling approach that does not have characteristic of random selection and the use of probability theory is considered non-statistical sampling. Non-statistical sample size are determined by applying professional judgment and guidance in audit firm policy. Even though there is no statistical formula or tables, auditing standards require that the sample sizes should be comparable between statistical and non-statistical. Stratification. Now, Audit efficiency may be improved if the auditor stratifies a population by dividing it into discrete subpopulations which have an identifying characteristic. Now, if you were to look at this word, it's coming from the word strata, that means you categorize. The objective of stratification is to reduce the variability of items within each stratum and therefore allow sample size to be reduced without increasing sample risk. Tolerable misstatement. Look, the word here is misstatement. 
It is a monetary amount set by the auditor in respect of which the auditor seeks to obtain an appropriate level of assurance that the monetary amount set by the auditor is not exceeded by the actual misstatement in the population. Tolerable rate of deviation A rate of deviation from prescribed internal control procedures set by the auditor in respect of which the auditor seeks to obtain an appropriate level of assurance that the rate of deviation set by the auditor is not exceeded by the actual rate of deviation in the population.